What's up, everybody? I'm Kat Ridgeway, and this is The Cookhouse. Order up! What's up, y'all? My name's Kat Ridgeway, and I'm a singer-songwriter from Orlando, Florida. Oh, man. The... Most of that record, Nice to Meet You, and the reason it's named Nice to Meet You is because it was about all these different types of relationships and interactions with different types of people. Not even necessarily romantic relationships or anything, just different people that you meet and the things that happen because they walk in and out of your life. Um, the best example of that is probably the story of Juliana Money and if you haven't heard that story already, the bullet points are, I was in Atlanta, a couple of friends and I went to this bar, we saw this girl dancing up a storm and I thought she had just this really captivating presence. And I had to know her name before we left and I found out it was Juliana Money. I thought she was messing with me and the joke for the rest of the night became that that had to be her stripper name. So I wrote it in my phone because I was like, if that is her real name, cool. If it's not, which it's probably not, it still sounds iconic and it could be something for a song. So months later, I come back to this note. I write the song. We start playing it live. I end up back in Atlanta. I tell the story of this crazy girl and play the song. I get back to Orlando the next day. And this guy messages me through Instagram and he's like, hey, Kat, did you say the name of that song was Juliana Money? And I was like, yeah, why? He's like, that is wild because I have a friend of the same name. And I was like, dude, you, there's no way. And then 20 minutes later, Juliana.Money DMs me and she's like, hey, baby, have we met before? <laughs> and it's actually her. And it's like, it was the craziest thing and then we ended up filming the music video together in the very room where we met in Atlanta when my band and I were coming back through on tour and you know so I was I was really inspired by that and then the song Nobody is just kind of about that rambling traveler spirit um we were kind of talking about this behind the scenes earlier but I studied abroad in Australia when I was in college and have done a fair amount of backpacking since and there's a real freedom that comes with being this ambiguous person that people have no frame of reference for. And so nobody was kind of about that. And, um, you know, you got a couple love songs on the record and yeah, it's, it's just about people. People are cool. Yeah, this is a great question. And it's, I think, it really encapsulates the journey that I've been on just as an artist because I have always been so madly in love with the craft of songwriting. And I think that's very evident on Passenger Seat because the first song's like a country folk song. The second song is very much not. <laughs> um, there's some pop punk on there. There's some like beachy Jack Johnson-y sounding stuff. And it, it just kind of runs the gamut of a lot of different musical influences I have. And it was actually recorded more with the intent of being a pitching tool to go to publishing companies and stuff like that. Um, and in a way, I'm, I, I love it for that reason, but a lot of people had the reaction in the industry of like, you don't know who you are as an artist, like we need more of a direction from you, blah, 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 blah. And so, Instead of focusing so much on being a songwriter, when I went to work on Nice to Meet You and I was in the planning phases of choosing which songs to pull from all these archives and stuff, I was very, very mindful of having a cohesive identity for this record. And I wanted to take my love of indie rock and old school Motown soul music and find where that intersection lies because I think that's a really good representation of me. Um, and, you know, so Nice to Meet You was much more of like, hey, this is me as an artist, where Passenger Seat was, hey, this is me as a songwriter. Man, I'll never be over the fact that I put a song out with Sean. That's so freaking cool to me. That's like career highlight number one. Um, I met him playing the 30A Songwriters Festival over in Destin, which is this, amazing songwriters festival happens every year and 
these people come in and play it and a lot of a lot of the time you know exactly who's playing it's a bunch of famous people but a lot of the time too it's these names that you might not recognize and it's people who wrote massive hits for like Pat Benatar and all these pop people and and stuff and you never know who you're gonna meet and so when you first come in you have to sign all these posters because they auction them off at the end of the, the week and I saw that Sean was playing a show in Tampa a month or two after 30A in 2020. Uh, this was before the world blew up. Um, and so I was like, man, wouldn't it be so cool if I could meet him at 30A and then open the show? And so I reached out to his people and got on the show in Tampa. So I was elated and I was like, okay, it would be so cool still if I could meet him beforehand. And I ended up running like three hours late on the road getting to check in at 30A. And they're like, hey, we gotta have you sign these posters. And lo and behold, he's sitting there signing the posters and we end up like signing posters with each other. And I, he was hilarious, man. He was like, yeah, man, sometimes I sign it as uh, Sean Mendez and just see if anyone notices. <laughs> And so we just kind of immediately hit it off. He's a really chill guy. And I was like, hey, I'm opening for you in Tampa. He's like, oh my God, that's so cool. Your name's Kat. And he like he knew who I was. Like he was that chill, that nice, and that humble of a guy. And so fast forward, we played the show in Tampa and he really enjoyed my set and invited me to come up and play his birthday shows in Georgia the next month. And so I drove up to Georgia, played this double header, and literally the next day, the first few cases of COVID trickled in. And we were like, oh God, what's about to happen? And we were actually set to go on tour together. Um, and then everything, you know, the rug just got pulled out from under us. So instead of just sitting there, I was like, hey man, what if we just like pop on a FaceTime call, do a little co-write action, something? And he's like, yeah, cool. So I had this idea for a song for years and I just hadn't finished it for whatever reason and I was like I just need help with the structure of this one and we ended up finishing Give Me Love together and going in the studio tracking with his band and it's the first time I've ever tracked live in a room like that recording is actually the band all playing together in one take and which is just incredible to me. Um, later on a couple of the players and I went in and laid the horns on top. I'm actually playing trumpet on that track. Um, and it was just the most insane experience ever. And I, I think back to how many dominoes had to fall for that to happen. And it's just so cool. And I'm just really grateful that people who are as successful as Sean still have the artistic spirit and understand where people start from. He's never forgotten where he came from and he tries really hard to help other people. Um, the way that he would have liked to have been helped when he was getting going. So, Sean, if you ever see this, thank you. Dude, that's been wild. Like, I, I can't believe that we had music go to commercial radio at all. This is, that's what you always hope for as a songwriter, but I got into this because I love it. I never got into it because I wanted that type of success or anything, so to see my passion reach people and see tangible results of it reaching people is just insane to me. I'm just so unbelievably grateful that people out there have taken the time to listen to what I've made and it's been a positive experience for them. Um, but yeah, I mean, as an independent artist, I remember looking at the, the chart when, when we first got the info and I was one of only three artists on the bubbling up, or two artists, I think, on the bubbling up chart that weren't associated with a label. And I was like, wow, we really did something here, man. Like we really did that ourselves. And um, my family has just been absolutely incredible from the get go. And we joke all the time that we're an in-house record label, but because we all live in the same house. Um, but yeah, it's, it's taken a lot of work and a lot of time and a lot of persistence over a lot of years and it was like finally something showed that we were doing things right and yeah that's just been really really cool <laughs> well i think i think it's twofold 
Um, it's, I feel like finishing what I started with Nice to Meet You, which would be releasing the rest of the music videos and things that we've made to go along with it. Um, and my band and I are actually about to go on tour for the very first time, and I am so stoked. That's something I've wanted to do since I was a really little kid, and it's like, it's finally happening, and we're going all the way up the East Coast and playing a bunch of different radio stations and hopefully some house shows and stuff too. Um, so that's, that's a goal that I have, um, and that's in sight, so that's amazing. Um, but things that are a little less tangible at the moment would be to have my brother and I finish building the studio in our house right now. We moved during the pandemic and uh, we took the master suite in the house. <laughs> Thanks, mom and dad. Um, and we have turned it into a studio and it's our rehearsal space as well. And uh, so yeah, we have our sights set on an interface, a couple different microphones and stuff like that, some soundproofing and um, you know, we're, we're gonna get our hands dirty with that. And then the goal from there is to record the next record ourselves. Um, there's something really intriguing to me about being the only player on my next record. Um, Cause I, I would just be really curious to see what the sound would be like if I played most of the instrumentation myself because I that's how I demo things and there is something uh, that I can't quite put my finger on about my demos that I really like and I wonder if I can kind of capture lightning in a bottle with my brother's help so um, I don't know stay tuned we'll see <laughs> but making a record in my house whether I'm playing all the things or not is probably the next big uh, benchmark I, I would like to hit. Instagram, 10 out of 10. I don't really use Twitter, like, at all. Um, sorry to anyone who does. <laughs> I don't know, Instagram's just cooler. There's more stuff you can do. I like being able to post a story and see people's reels, and it tends to be more artsy-fartsy content that I really enjoy seeing on Instagram, so yeah. Honestly, don't shower for a week. Let me tell you why. Um, Cause I actually did that once when I was in college. Um, I did one of the alternate spring break trips with a couple of people and we went out west and did all these hiking trails. And we were literally miles from civilization and all we had were like body wet wipes and stuff. So I have, I have lived that life um, and it's apparently good for your skin and your hair to not shower as often. So yeah, sardines, uh, probably a good source of protein, but I don't think that's my, my jam, you know? <laughs> iPhone, I'm sorry, like just Mac. I'm a whore for Mac. <laughs> Being a creative, if you're working on music and stuff and, and you don't have a Mac, I feel like you're just doing it wrong. And that's like the industry standard these days and it's just easier to work with other people and being creative equals collaboration. So I feel like I kind of don't get a choice. <sighs> Poor kid, no <laughs> I've, I've, I feel like I have done both. Um, when I'm, when I'm in a really good manic mood and I'm having a good time, I just won't sleep. Um, I also am addicted to coffee in a way you wouldn't believe. So I, but simultaneously, I'm the sleepiest, most energetic person you've ever met in your life. I will sleep till like 2 p.m. every single day. Um, so can I be like a party sloth? Can I be both? <laughs> Oh, that's so hard. Um, I will, you know, I really enjoy playing electric with the band, but there's something really special and cozy when we strip down completely as a band. And I've really been digging that. I've actually been considering making a whole record like that now. Um, so at this particular moment in time, I'm gonna say acoustic. Punch buggy just because I want to see other people punch each other when I drive by. Doritos, particularly the Cool Ranch ones.
Um, hmm, that's really difficult. I have to say though, I really do like being here. Um, I'm, I'm a surfer and uh, being far away from the water just makes me sad in all types of ways. So I wouldn't be heartbroken staying here forever, you know? I really wouldn't. But I really hope and pray that climate change brings colder weather down here. <laughs> Practically debit card. Um, I I just got my very first credit card this week. Um, I'm very excited about it, and I will be buying a Mac because <laughs> I need to make records. I get to the I, like my current computer is too old. Um, it doesn't even have the right input to record into from the interface we want to get, and it's just like yeah. Um, so while I am super stoked about credit cards right in this moment. Um, I, I really hate having payments hanging over my head, so I'm gonna go with a debit card. Mmm, probably bikini in, in the cold weather. That's like, I don't know, people take ice baths, so it's gotta be good for you, right? I feel like heat, you'd just have a heat stroke and die. <laughs> like, at least there's like a perceived benefit from being really cold. <laughs> like, raise my metabolism a little bit, let's go. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna say seltzer because I'm allergic to gluten and I can't drink beer, but gluten-free beer has my heart forever. Like, beer in general has my heart forever. I thought just the last time I tried to drink a Guinness, it's the worst decision I've ever made in my life. <laughs> I can never go back, but there are some really good gluten-free beers. Um, New Grist, Greens, if you see this video, please sponsor me. I love you forever. <laughs> I think split my pants on stage because then that gives me the perfect excuse to sing the ripped my pants song from Spongebob and just make it into a moment. I would actually be genuinely afraid of hurting myself if I fell off a stage. So let's, let's not do that. <laughs> mm, I'm gonna say a pack of wolves because I was attacked by a dog when I was eight and I survived and I could have died. Uh, that's actually what all of these scars are from. And they go like all the way up in here and my ear was actually back here and like had to have eight hours of emergency surgery to put my face back together and stuff. So if I can do that, I think I can take on a pack of wolves. <laughs> Cause I basically already took one on. <laughs> hey, hey, this is Kat Ridgeway and you just watched The Cookouts. Be sure to keep up with me. I have a bunch of tour dates that are gonna be announced really soon. You can go to my website, which is www.catridgeway.com and it's cat with a C. All the dates will be listed on there and special shout out if you're in Georgia, we're gonna be at Wire and Wood on October 8th and 9th and I get to bring the whole band with me this year and I'm super stoked. Um, but if you're not in Georgia, if you're around my hometown in Orlando, we got a bunch of shows coming up too. Come say hey if you make it to a show. And also, don't forget to comment and subscribe.